Elementor 3.21 came with the release of the taxonomy query for LoopGrid, which got a lot of us excited. In fact, Imran from Web Squadron, he released two videos out of excitement. One of them was from his hotel room using his phone, and the other one was from his studio. But one thing I've noticed with Elementor is that whenever they come up with a new feature, the initial phase is always very limited. You can look at the grid container. Currently, we don't have grid column and grid rows for the grid child elements. The same thing now with the taxonomy query. It is quite nice. It allows us to use ACF and WooCommerce, but that's just about it. You can't use any other custom field. You can pull in data from any taxonomy. So if you're using Jet Engine taxonomy, you can pull in data, but the custom meta fields for Jet Engine or Pods or Metabox, currently it does not work in the loop grid when using the taxonomy query. But fortunately, the people at Dynamic U, they released the Dynamic Shortcuts plugin, which works with any page builder and it gives you a ton of options. And I'll be showing you how the Dynamic Shortcuts helps you to overcome so many limitations within the loop grid. So if that's something that interests you, then stick around and we'll jump right into it. So this is the example we'll be working with today, is the taxonomy query for the Elementor loop grid. And basically, I'm pulling in the events location custom taxonomy, which is attached to the events custom post type. The custom taxonomy and custom post type were created using Jet Engine. And to even mix things up further, I created some fields using pods and I'm also pulling in some native fields. So the image is the taxonomy image from Jet Engine. This is the archive title. Then we have a pods meta field, followed by another Jet Engine meta field. And finally, I'm pulling in the archive description. And we'll be looking at how to do three things today, which Elementor doesn't give us natively. So first, we're showing how to pull in meta fields from different meta field plugins. Then I'm also going to show you how to inline two dynamic data together. And we'll also see how to shorten the archive description so that rather than pulling in the entire archive description, we're just pulling in the first 15 words. So those are the three things we're going to be looking at how to do today using dynamic shortcodes. So now let's go ahead and see what we're working with. So basically under Jet Engine taxonomies, I created a taxonomy called event locations and the slug is event-location. It is attached to the events post type. And then I've added two meta fields. One is the location image meta field and this is the key, location-image. The other is the place meta field, which is also a text meta field, and the key is just place. Then using pods, I created another meta field, which is attached to the same events location, and I just basically called it pods extra. It's also a plain text. Now let's go ahead and see the examples of the event locations. So that is under the events post type, event locations. I have several countries basically. And then within those countries, let me open one of them. We have the archive title, which is the name. Then we have the archive description, which has a long description, but we just want to pick out the first 15 words, followed by the pods meta field and the jet engine meta field. So to show you that it works with anyone, you can work with Metabox, Jet Engine, Pods, ACF, and anyone that you have. So now that we have all of these, let me go ahead and show you the Elementor page now. So this is the page. All we have in the page is just the loop grid and some basic text. So now within the loop grid, this is already set up, so I'm just going to recreate it. Let me go in, and then I'll just delete the container. So we'll start from scratch. So first we need a container. And you'll notice that it is automatically set to full width for the content width. That is not the default from Elementor. But what I did is that I dropped in the container widget. Then I changed it to full width, made some other adjustments, and then I right-clicked on the container within the edit area. 
and pressed save as default. Once you do that, anytime you drop in the widget from the elements panel, it will drop that widget with that settings already saved because it's saved to the database. So that's it. Now I'll just drop in the image widget. Then I'll drop in some text widgets. So heading, set this to maybe H3. So that is this heading. Then I'll drop in another one. So heading field again. Maybe this time I'll set it to paragraph tag. This is just random text. You will do something better when you're working on yours. You use the proper tags, but I'm just trying to show you an example here. So now that we have all of this, I'm not going to show you how to style it or anything, just to show you that we can pull in the meta fields. So first, for the image, we're trying to pull in the jet engine image. So since it is from the taxonomy, we can't use the featured image dynamic tag. If you use that, nothing will show up. So that doesn't work. And since it's jet engine, you might say, okay, I want to use the jet engine custom tags. So let's go there. You see there are some tags for jet engine and then we have one that's called the term image. So you might think that that is the right one. So let's try it out. Term image. I'll click on the wrench icon. I'll choose the taxonomy, which is the events location. Then the meta field. Let me go ahead and look for it again. It was called location image. So just copy that. Go back to the edit screen and paste it in. And you see we have the image here, so you might say, oh, great, I am getting it correct. But let's go ahead and publish it and go back and see it in action. So go back and you notice there are no images. So where do our images go? So unfortunately, the meta fields from Jet Engine, they don't work. You will have to use something else. So that's where the Dynamic Shortcodes plugin comes in. So I'll come back again to the image. Clear this out, and this time I'll choose the dynamic tags again and choose the dynamic shortcodes. Then all I have to do is come to the wrench icon, and the syntax is simple. So I'll open and close the curly brace. Then I'll choose term because it's a term meta field. Put the colon, and then I'll just paste in that same key, which is location dash image. But you see, it is showing a broken symbol. Why is that? That's because, let's go back. I saved the value format as an array of the ID and the URL. So basically, what is returning is an array. But if you see from the warning sign here, we need just the ID. We don't need an array here. We need just the ID. So how can we get the ID? We need to access the array. With dynamic shortcodes, the way you can access arrays using the double pipe symbol, so I'll put the double pipe and it comes in two so either id or url any of them will work so i'll use id in this case so id and i get the image again and this time we can see if it's working or not so i'll publish it and save and back you see now the image is pulling in correctly so that's the first problem done now the second problem is how to inline the two meta fields so let's see. Ideally, you just use the dynamic tag and choose archive title. It will come up with the archive title, but it also includes the context. So you can go to the wrench icon, turn off the context, and you get just the title. But the problem is that how can you now add in an inline dynamic tag? So if you go to the advanced tab, there's no way to add in dynamic data, you can only add in static data for the before, after, because there's no dynamic tag symbol. So how can we do it? That's where we need dynamic shortcodes again. So let me clear this out. Choose the dynamic tags, then dynamic shortcodes. I'll click on the wrench icon and I'll do the same thing. This time I'm trying to get the name of the taxonomy term. So say term. All of the things we're going to be working here, it always starts with term because this is a taxonomy term query loop. So let me put the column symbol and the term name is name. Basically, that is the name of the archive. 
So now that we've gotten that, you can now press the comma. This is where the dynamic shortcodes plugin shines that you can mix and match dynamic data however you like. So the second one is from the pods. So I'll press open and close the curly brace again. Press term, colon. And this time it is called, let me see the pods name. It was called pods extra. So let me just copy the name. Go back to the Elementor edit screen and then just paste that name in there. And see we get the name there. So Argentina, comma, the country code. So that's how we get the inline data. So finally, let me just add the last one. Dynamic tags. Dynamic shortcodes. Wrench icon. Open and close the curly brace. Term. And this one was the, let me go back and see what his name was. It's just called place. Let me just press place. So we have the next one. Then finally, the last problem that I said we're going to solve is how to shorten the archive description. Because that was a question that one of the community members asked. So let me go to the last one. Choose the dynamic tags. Naturally, Elementor gives you the dynamic tag for archive description. So let's choose that. And then I'll choose the wrench icon. But you see, there's no way to shorten it because it only allows you to shorten when you're using the excerpt dynamic tag. But this is not excerpt. That's why there's no option to shorten the number of characters. But fortunately, with dynamic shortcodes, you can do it as well. Let me close this. I'll choose the dynamic tags again. And then dynamic shortcodes, the wrench icon. And this is the description. So term description. So we get that description, but it's back to the same problem is the full description. How do we now shorten it? We can take advantage of one of WordPress's filter, which is the WP trim words. So I'll use the pipe symbol to start the filter. So you now write WP underscore trim underscore words. Open and close the straight braces and then put the number of words that we want. In this case, I want just 15 words. So you want five. You see, it's basically just takes out the first 15 words and then put dot, 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 and we are done. So you see, this is how we can shorten our archive description, how we can inline to dynamic data and how we can pull in dynamic data from different meta fields into Elementor taxonomy loop grid. Currently, you see Elementor has, let me show you an example. Let me duplicate this. Elementor has a dynamic tag called archive meta. But like I showed in my previous video when I was reviewing the Elementor 3.21, the archive meta only works within the back end, but doesn't show up in the front end. Let me show you what I mean. This one was called place. So I'll just say place. It will show up when we are editing the template. But let me publish it and go back. You see that it doesn't show up here because Elementor is still working on it, but they are quite slow. So the archive meta doesn't work. Only the archive title and ACF. So if you are using ACF or you are using WooCommerce, they will work, but any other thing will not work. But fortunately, if you have dynamic shortcodes, then all of this will work for you. So yeah, that's it. If this video has helped you, please do leave a like, share the video, write in the comments that it helped you and... If you are willing to buy dynamic short codes, please, there will be the affiliate link in the description. You can use that link. It will help me out and it will be at no additional cost to you. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.